Okay, um, guess we'll start now. So, hi. Um, allow me to introduce myself. I am um, Joey. Um, I live in Hangzhou. Um, I currently work on the compiler team at Igaria. I am a member of the Nodge Technical Steering Committee and the Diagnostics Working Group. Uh, you can find me on GitHub or Twitter with the handle Joy Chang. Um, so let's go with the agenda here. Um, we are going to first have an introduction to postmodern diagnostics. Then we'll dive into a case study on how it works on a specific JavaScript engine in this case, V8, and how it works with a specific debugger, in this case, LNode, working on top of LDB. Um, we'll also cover the JavaScript API of LNode, then look into a, the vision that we started two years ago at Node Interactive Europe. Okay, so what is postmodern diagnostics? Um, it's basically a jargon for Debugging, debugging dumps created when a process crashes or like created when something like jQuery is triggered on the process. So depending on the configuration of the system, um, a dump capturing the state of the crashed process may be cr written to the disk before the process terminates. So for example, some Linux servers um, may be configured to generate core dumps, which are like snapshots of the memory space of the crashed process. Um, there's also other useful data, um, like register values in the core dump. Um, Windows desktop may write a file with the minidump format when the process crashes. So minidump is a more compact format with only the essential information about the crashed process. Um, there are also other formats that may be configured to, uh, by the user. For example, the Node Core module that's being in, um, integrated into Node Core can generate a summary with no specific information when a Node.js process crashes. So in this talk, uh, we'll focus on core dumps and specifically Linux core dumps. So on Linux, executable binaries are usually encoded in the ELF format. So the ELF format specifies um, a way for the compilers to put debugging information into certain sections inside executable. Um, and for, uh, and like specify a way for the debugger, debuggers to look for this information in order to do their job. So the sections of the working information in a Linux executable are usually encoded in another format, format um, call, called dwarf, which can be used by the debugger to restore things like verbal names, um, data structures, and source code, etc. Um, the core dumps on Linux are also encoded in the L format, so debuggers like GDB or LDB can map the debugging information in the executable onto the process snapshot uh, from the core dump to reconstruct the state of the process during the crash. So for programs written in static languages with good debugger support, like C or C++, you can use debuggers to learn about um, things like the function call during the crash or the state of the variable when the crash happens. Um, but programs written in dynamic languages run by a language virtual machine may be harder to debug with these native debuggers because the debugging information, like the type information, may be dynamically generated during the runtime. Um, in that case, this dynamically generated debugging information are in the core dump instead of in the executable. And this information may be encoded away um, specific to the implementation of the virtual machine because unfortunately there isn't a commonly supported 
um, specification like dwarf for this debug, uh, dynamic debugging information. So the debuggers may not know how to interpret these core dumps from dynamic language virtual machines out of the box. Um, the native debuggers may still be able to um, understand the state of the virtual machines themselves if the VNs are implemented in a static language, but the debuggers cannot understand the state of the program run inside the virtual machine. But we can still teach a specific debugger to understand what happens inside a specific language virtual machine. So for example, we can get the virtual machine to implement um, an interface specified by a certain debugger so that the debugger knows how to read into the virtual machine out of the box. Um, another approach is to expose some debugging information about how to interpret the state inside the virtual machine in the executable and implement a virtual machine specific customer reader as a plugin of a debugger to restore the state inside the VM when the process crashes. Um, so here is our case study. Um, Lnode is one of these kind of plugins. Um, it's a plugin of the LDB debugger that can be used to look inside the states of the VA JavaScript engine. Um, it is a project under the Node.js Diagnostics Working Group. Um, it can be used to debug both the core dumps and the live processes of Node.js applications. Um, although it's named Lnode, it actually works with other programs that AMS V8 built with postmodern di um, diagnostic support. For example, it also works with the DA shell that is used to run V8 tests. Um, Okay, so this is how Erno uh, comes in and play the role as a VA whisperer for LDB. Um, so what I'm going to describe here are specific to the current implementation of V8, but they are good enough for our case study. Uh, as mentioned before, to teach a debugger like LDB about the object model of a dynamic language runtime, uh, in this case V8, we need to have additional debugging information available in the executable. Um, so in V8, the layout of JavaScript, JavaScript values and frames are defined by a set of st um, static offsets and other known constants. Um, to enable postmodern diagnostics, V8 has a script that extracts certain useful offsets and constants out of the source code um, it generates a C++ file with these values exposed as global variables, and then we just need to make sure that these static values are compiled into the executable for the debuggers to read. Um, these values are called postmodern metadata in our context. They are all just symbols prefixed with a V8 dbg underscore um, that can be located, for example, the Node.js executable. So using this metadata, Lnode is able to understand the VA object model and reconstruct JavaScript states, such as um, JavaScript functions corresponding to the stack frames and JavaScript objects in the, in the heap. Um, so in, to implement a feature in Lnode, first the maintainers read the VA source code to come up with algorithms for reverse engineering the VA object model. Then in the implementation of the LNO plugin, we load exact values of certain metadata that is exposed in the executable. If the necessary metadata is not exposed through the script that we mentioned about earlier, we will submit a patch to VA to expose it. So with the algorithm, and metadata in place, we can then implement certain readers, uh, custom readers in Lnode to interpret memory blocks found in the core dump. Um, the infrastructure that Lnode use to do this in a cross-platform manner 
actually comes from the LDB ABI, uh, API. Okay, now let's see how we can reconstruct a JavaScript value out of the raw memory dump. So in V8, the heap memory are organized in pages. And then in each page, the memory are organized in words and they're aligned. So for example, on a 64-bit machine, the words are in eight bytes. So given the arbitrary address to a word in the memory, we can first examine the last bit of the word. If the last bit is zero, then it's a smart integer, also known as SMI. So on a 64-bit um, machine, the useful bits of an SMI are the first 32 bits, which store a signed integer. Then we can display the value of this word by interpreting the first 32 bits. So most of the times, these SMIs are just primitives pointed by other values. So what are the other values? So in another case, if the last bit of a word is one, in the context of V8, that means this word is a pointer. So it, com it contains an address to another block in the memory. On 64-bit machines, V8 aligns the memory blocks in eight bytes. So the addresses are all multiples of eight, which means the last three bits of these addresses are all zero. So to interpret the word as an address, we can extract the first um, 64, 61 bits, pattern it with three zeros, and interpret it as a pointer. So now that we know it's a pointer, we can use this address to look for another block in the core dump. Um, so in V8, the tag pointers all point to a block of memory representing a heap object. And the first word of the heap object block is a pointer to a map, also known as a hidden class, um, that contains meta information about this object. Um, we can then follow the map pointer again, read another block of memory that represents the map. So here, map is also a type of heap object with its map being a meta map. Uh, we can then read a field at a given offset in the map of the heap object. Um, this field contains information about the type of the heap object instance. Then we can compare the type information or some bits of it um, with known types or constants available as postmodern metadata to um, obtain further information on how we should interpret this object. So there are many different types of heap objects in V8. Some of them are well-known, uh, like have well-known layout that we can just interpret right ahead with the metadata. For example, many simple ASCII strings in V8 are of the type seek one by string, and they all have a common map. So for example, with a string full, the type information in its map contains several bits that indicate um, this object is a string, its encoding uh, is one byte per character, and the underlying representation is sequential. So when we see a string with a map like this, we can use our knowledge coming from reading the VA source. Um, first, read the um, first read the length out of the third word, then we can read all the bytes stored after the third word up to the known length sequentially, then reconstruct the value of the string by interpreting characters in each byte. But there are also um, some values with flexible structures that are dynamically generated during runtime. For example, most JavaScript objects in V8 are of this type called JS object. And there are multiple ways to store the properties of this object. So JS objects contain two pointers, um, one for named properties and another for elements that are just properties with integers as keys. To interpret, um, to interpret the named properties, we can look at the map of the project um, 
uh, of the object, which should contain a, a pointer to the descriptor array that contains keys, key names, and details of each property. So for faster access, VA may also store a limited amount of properties directly in the object after the two pointers. Uh, the information about these in-object properties are also available in the descriptor array. Then to interpret the elements, we can look at the backing store pointed by the elements pointer in the JS object. Um, objects that contain too many properties or have too many properties deleted may be put into dictionary mode with a flexible property dictionary instead of a set of fixed descriptors. The mode of the object can also be inspected by reading a bit fill from the map. And the dictionaries are self-contained self structures that we can also interpret easily. Um, so we have talked about how LNode interpret JavaScript values. Now let's look at how LNode helps LDB to understand the JavaScript call stacks. Um, the native debugger can unwind the native call stack by looking at register values and the unwind convention encoded in the executable as debugging information and restore the frames in the call stack. For C or C++ stack frames, the debugger is able to restore the symbols like functionings, arguments, um, local variables, things like that, by using the debugging information in the executable put by C or C++ compiler. But for the JavaScript stack frames, the native debugger is only able to unwind the frames and see their locations, but it doesn't know how to interpret the JavaScript symbols there. And this is where Elno can help. So most of the interesting types of frames in VH are formatted with a fixed header that contains a pointer to a JS function object. So given a pointer to a stack frame, Elno will first try to locate that um, JS function pointer at known offset and try to interpret the object um, that it points to as a JS function object. So the JS function object in turn contains pointers to a shared function info object, which points to a, shared, uh, a script object. So from the script object, we can retrieve information about the JavaScript function called in the frame, um, including the source code of the function, the name of the file containing the source code, the line and um, call number of the function, and so on. The shared function info object also contains the number of formal parameters in the function. So VA lays out the arguments matching the formal parameters as well as the receiver, that is the this object, um, sequentially at another offset um, from the frame pointer. So LNO can also try to reconstruct the arguments and the receiver pass to this function by iterating through the pointers at their offsets, at, um, at those offsets. Um, so the LNL project was originally just a plugin for the LDB debugger, and it used to only work with the LDB console. Um, we recently released a JavaScript API for this project that enables users to restore JavaScript from the core dump back to JavaScript. Um, it is available as a, an ordinary Node.js C++ add-on, which you can just install with um, NPM. So instead of depending on the LDB console, the add-on depends on the LDB shared library and wraps LNO's functionality through and API wrappers for Node.js applications to use. Um, the design of the API is still somewhat primitive for now. Um, it still returns strings that they are formatted for the LDB console, but you can come to the project's issue checker if you have any ideas regarding the design of the JavaScript API. Um, so this is how the API currently looks like. 
uh, you can require the module test um, path to the core dump and to um, the, the path to the node executable as arguments to the from core dump function to create a L node instance. Then you can call get process object to get the states of the process inside the core dump um, inspect is threads and frames in each thread. Um, you, you can also ask L node to scan the heap um, for JavaScript objects, memorize all the types that it encounters during the scan, and for each type in the heap, get the number of instances, the total size of all the instances with that type, and see the detail of each instance with that type. Um, so we have talked about how LNO works with V8, but is it the best way to do this? While the approach taken by LNO is highly dependent on the implementation details of V8, and it's very easy to break whenever V8 changes its internal object layout, but it works well enough with the Node.js LTS schedule because it only needs to support a specific set of versions of V8. Um, this approach requires the minimum amount of effort from V8 side because for the approach behind our node to work, V8 only needs to keep the general architecture of its current object model and keeps exposing the um, postmodern metadata. And this approach comes with um, zero overhead during, because um, the work that needs to be done from VA side all happen in compile time. So currently, the work, the code written to do postmodern diagnostics with V8 is not shared across similar plugins for other debuggers like NDB V8, and each plugin is limited to the platform supported by the native debugger. So two years ago, um, the Node.js Postmodern Diagnostic Working Group, now being part of the Diagnostic Working Group, uh, had a vision to build more easy-to-use diagnostic tools on top of existing projects. So right now, with the release of the LNL JavaScript API, we are one step closer to the vision, but there is still a long way to go. So if you're interested, in postmodern diagnostics in Node.js or just in JavaScript in general, please join us on GitHub to help us with this vision. Thank you.